Hello there once again, wherever you may be. This week I've assembled some very interesting fragments from Gurdjieff, including some of the most difficult material that he wrote and that is never discussed. And I think I'll talk a little bit about politics at the end, which is weighing heavily on my mind these days. Later, Gurdjieff spoke to Lonya about having a task of sleeping only six and a half hours each night. Lonya asked if he could come to it gradually, but Gurdjieff said no. He also asked, but how long must I do this? Then Gurdjieff's eyes flashed with that terrible fire of his, and he said almost in a shout, Forever! Such is the average man, an unconscious slave to the all-universal purposes which are alien to his own personal individuality. He lives through all his years as he is, and as such he is destroyed forever. This week I was reading the sections where Gurdjieff discusses the future of the astral body after the death of the planetary body. And it seems to me that the great discord of the fallen natures of the men of the earth who create such great disruption also affects the life of the Kestrian body. The problems that we encounter are not just in this world, but also in the next world. In that the line of safety of the soul is rather far away. The Gurdjieff said that if there were 200 conscious beings on the planet, that they could save it. But what does that mean, that only 200 of all the people on the planet are going to make it? I don't know the prognosis of people after death. There could be many things. Certainly some of them live admirable lives. What I do know is that through spiritual techniques, those changes he talks about do actually happen. And if you do not perform these techniques, then they don't actually happen. And I know that in the past, Western people, altogether, they would rise, and that they no longer live like their ancestors. In many groups of the Fourth Way, they have the idea that if you read Beelzebub's Tales, Gurdjieff's book, that it would somehow automatically transform you presumably due to some energetic effects that Gurdjieff had implanted in it. Well, the interesting thing is that last night I was half-consciously reciting a few traditional Catholic prayers, and I could see them changing my astral body. The effect is subtle, but it's definitely there. Why? How? I don't know. I made some major discoveries this week to do with the crystallizations of the many eyes. When you're young, your parents teach you to eat with a knife and fork. It becomes a kind of association, part of your rhythm, so that when you make lunch and dinner, you get the knife and fork out of the drawer and sit at the table. Another kind of association is that you retain this subconscious sense of anxiety because your uncle or your grandfather or somebody was unloving towards you, and that that also lingers with you. Those are two things that you learned when you were young, and there are very important conclusions that can be actioned that come from thinking carefully about that. So let's go into that difficult material which has to do with Gorn Ho Ha Hark and the very peculiar scientific experiments that he demonstrated to Beelzebub on his journeys. And when these extremely peculiar costumes had been put on us, his assistant screwed up the heads of these bolts in a certain order. On the inner side of these said diving suits, 
and at the end of the said bolts there were, it appeared, special plates which pressed against parts of our planetary body in a certain way. It later also became quite clear to me why this was necessary, namely that there might not occur to our planetary bodies what is called Tara Nura Nura, or as it might otherwise be said, in order that our planetary bodies should not fall to pieces as usually occurs to sir in intraplanetary formations of every kind when they happen to find themselves in a vacuum. In addition to these special costumes, they placed on our heads a something also resembling what are called divers' helmets, but with very complicated, as they are called, connectors projecting from them. One of these connectors was called the Harin Harhar, which meant support of the pulsation, and was a long thing like a rubber tube, one end of which by means of complicated appliances on the helmet itself, was hermetically attached to the corresponding place of the helmet for the breathing organs, while the other end, after we had already entered that strange Hra-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha was screwed up to an apparatus there present, which was connected in its turn with the space, the presence of which corresponded to the second being who. Between myself and Gornho-ha-hark, a special connector also led, through which we could easily communicate with each other while we were inside the hra ha 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 from which the atmosphere was pumped out to make a vacuum. One end of this connector also, by means of appliances present on the helmets, was fitted in a certain way to what are called my organs of hearing and speech, and the other end to the same organs of gornho ha ha Thus, by means of this connector between myself and my subsequent essence friend, they were set up, as again your favourites would say, a peculiar telephone. Without this artificial appliance, we could not communicate with each other in any way, and chiefly because Gornho Hahak was at that time still a being with a presence perfected only up to the state called the sacred in Kutsorno, and a being with such a presence not only cannot manifest himself in a vacuum, but he cannot even exist in it, even though the products of all the three being foods should be artificially introduced into him in such a space. But the strangest, and as it is said, most cunningly ingenious of all the connectors present for various purposes on these strange diving suits and helmets were the connectors created by that great scientist Gornho Ilash, to enable the organ of sight of ordinary beings to perceive the visibility of surrounding objects of all kinds in absolutely empty space. One of these astonishing connectors was fitted in a certain way also by means of appliances present on the helmets to our temples, while the other was joined to what is called the Askunuteta which in its turn was joined in a certain way by means of what are called wires to all the objects within the Prahaharatsaha, as well as with those outside, namely with those objects whose visibility was needed during the experiments. to farm sheep you have to show them the field and the water and the place where they sleep at night. You point out to them and you facilitate their knowledge of those parts that are needed to do the job that you want them to do. They cannot see the mechanisms within which they live, although since ancient times a few of them could and try to communicate that information. And those are the holy schools which still exist today, and they still function today. 
The journey to becoming intelligent is a difficult one, and a personal one. To develop intelligence of all sorts is extremely challenging. I'm not sure it fits in here, but one thing I've been doing recently is to pray for my enemies every evening. In fact, I pray according to Gurdjieff's guidance to pray three times. I use a short form of the rosary and I pray it according to the formulas that I have mentioned. Namely, that the prayers are considered to accumulate a kind of higher light from heaven and then they are discharged towards those people that you pray for when you say Amen. There is a sense of discharging this higher film that is accumulated. And when I do that, I feel that I'm coming out of the desert and start to rise up and interact with life and actually send out a warmth into the world. Now I'm going to talk about politics now and I'll try to do so in a meaningful way and not an angry way. Maybe I should begin by saying what I see on the streets of England. I was in a typical countryside town a few weeks ago where 95% of the people are white. Maybe not all white English, but they are white. And you walk into one of the shops and every single poster in there is black. And it's really weird. It's really strange. Although, in truth, they do deserve condemnation for slavery, but perhaps not as much as is normally said. Many of the old stock English are simply hiding in their expensive houses and hoping it won't happen to them. But when their kids come back from being taught to be black and to be transgender, it is happening to them. There are other people in the public sector here who are clinging on to their pensions and once they retire it's like going to heaven. Then you have people at the lower end of the spectrum, the working class and scaffolders, many of whom have tattooed themselves so that they can be black and whenever they watch the football they no longer watch Paul Gascoigne and Alan Shearer and all white teams. What they watch is tattooed sodomites kneeling before the rainbow. Most of them aren't white anymore anyway. All the owners, managers and players speak different languages. And although I might personally know something about Shakespeare and the ancient grail cycles and the Crusades and Isaac Newton and about the Victorians and about Brunel and about British Empire. I'm a little tired of being patriotic on my own. Most British people seem to have just taken the money one way or the other. They all have their ways of doing it, whether it's the middle class or the managerial class or the old stock people or the public sector pensions people or the scaffolders ripping everybody off. They've all been taking the money. There is almost zero sense of patriotism in England coming from anyone. The one thing that they all agree on is that they will never, ever, ever go back to church. And frankly, I see a lot more life, dignity, religiousness, honour and family in the Albanians, in the Persians, in the Armenians, in the Egyptians, in the Eastern Europeans. And it seems to me that in Australia, in America, in Canada, the white English people are simply being dissolved. They don't seem to be connected either to heaven or earth. If we go back to World War II, and considering that the largest ethnic group in America is in fact German, it would have been an interesting story if America had come to restore Christianity to Europe and to support its allies and those people who they were blood related to. But instead, they completely destroyed all of Europe and the American GIs raped half of Europe afterwards. And then, instead of putting Christ back into Israel, they put the Jews into Israel. That does not compute to me. I was thinking this morning that 
in America, the original English population is dissolving and they have tried to make an alliance with the Jews in order to hold on. And that psychodrama of the declining English was really the cause of this horror of World War II, where 70 million Christians were killed. A number that you almost never hear. You hear other numbers, but not that number. And everything that you have been taught about World War II is designed to prevent you seeing that the United Kingdom and the United States committed an act of war against the Christian world that resulted in 70 million Christians dying. And the reason for that is that although England had once been a proud, crusading, Christian country, it had simply started to take the money. It had stopped making things with its hands. It had stopped being three-brained. It had fallen into idolatry. And today you hear people talking about the death of the West and so on. This is just the English psychodrama that you hear. The West still exists because the Greco-Roman Empire, the Catholic and Orthodox influences are very deep and they still exist in the West, meaning in continental Europe. In my apartment, I've got many wonderful books about the British Empire and from the British Empire, but am I, as a foreigner here, supposed to teach the English the virtues of their own history? At some point, it becomes ridiculous for me to continue like that. that Sunday evening, I happened to see a couple of interesting things. One was a Catholic Mass that was being held in the Philippines. And it was very wonderful and almost identical to the one that I had been in here. And that's something I've discovered about Catholicism, is that you can walk into any Catholic church and take Mass. And there is a real sense of Christian worldwide unity that is very sincere. And you have to remember that within Catholicism is the Greco-Roman tradition. There is pagan elements in there. There is a kind of magical force. There is the belief in a higher force that we interact with in a, in a very beautiful way, which includes the family, births, marriages, and deaths. So all these people who are looking for the Greco-Roman tradition or paganism, it's already there, and it still functions today. The Orthodox tradition is also very beautiful, but it is very monastic and concealed. It's very valuable, like a deep well. And some of the healthiest people who are Western, who are in England today, come from Poland or Slovenia, Slovakia, Bulgaria, these kind of countries on the Eastern side that are still Catholic and still recognizably Western. And the other thing I saw was some very beautiful African music from Kenya, which was a mixture of Kenyan tribal music and Catholic missionary music and I put it on at the end and I thought it was wonderful and once again I see that these are the black people African people from Kenya from Mozambique from the Niger from Senegal and from Cote d'Ivoire and all these people have their own culture their own rulers their own history okay when you hear about black people on the TV, all you're talking about is the sort of a gangster hustle from American streets, which they love over there. In America, everybody is simultaneously the president of America and John Wick's bulldog. The love of violence and grungy street grinding is what America is all about. Because even if you make it big in America, You'll grow old taking Prozac and supplements, desperately trying to live forever, and then your whole family be shot dead in the next incident. If I can finish off by saying something actually useful, when Protestantism happened in about 1500, the line broke and went off to America, and then it returned to destroy its homeland. And Gurdjieff says, Ines the octave reaches the next dough, it will devolute down. And this is one of the mechanisms that happens. The line splits and starts attacking itself. 
Somehow, because it has been part of that line, it has privileged knowledge of the octave and knows exactly its weak points. And that's where you get the, the internecine warfare of brother against brother. That's the meaning of that. And the beauty of seeing not the black people, but the Ghanaian people, but the Nigerian people, but the Madagascan people, is that suddenly you see an ethnos, you see a people, you see a race, and then things have meaning. Where there is no race, there is no meaning. And you can see the British in this country, now that the country is filled with foreign people, there is no sense of any meaning, because there is no family anymore. It doesn't matter what kind of family you have, how much work you do, how much you give to your state, your people are being removed, and without a race, there is no history, and there is no meaning whatsoever for your life. Race is the foundation of all human meaning. And the reason we are told differently is to protect the Americans and the British from the truth that they started two wars against the Christian world and destroyed 70 million Christians in order not to put Christ back into Israel, but to do something else. They have lost their own selves. And if they have a future, it is only to return to what they once were many hundreds of years ago. What do you expect? said Gurdjieff. And if one machine is unconscious, then a hundred machines are unconscious. And so are a thousand machines, or a hundred thousand, or a million. And the unconscious activity of a million machines must necessarily result in destruction and extermination. It is precisely an unconscious involuntary manifestations that all evil lies. The corollary of this is that if you are able to do sincere spiritual work, things can rapidly change for you because you come out of the general law of unconscious humanity, which is barely known by people anymore. If we look in general at the New Age, where people sit quietly together, they talk about the present moment. This does not work. Why not? Why not is that, first of all, you do not extend your abilities into the three-centered work. You're not learning anything. You're just being a middle-class, white, rich bum looking for salvation without going to church. And the second thing, you're not giving anything. You're not hanging your flesh. You're not willing to die. You simply want a fairy story whilst you lay dying. And this does not honour the great traditions of the courageous Western people who lived in the past. We are alchemical vessels and the journey is indeed very difficult because we have to go forwards and we have to dissolve at the same time. We melt ourselves and then fuse something new. Melt and fuse, melt and fuse. We receive from above and we release from below. We are traveling within ourselves. It is a difficult journey. It requires sometimes very painful work. There are many people who try to add something to themselves, to add love, feelings, charity. But they do not add very much because they do not reach high and they do not do the practices. And they do not give anything either because people are cheap. They do not know how to give anything of value. They just press the donate button and then count their stock portfolio. In all the ancient cultures of the earth, if you walk through their cities, you see their buildings, you look at the old art, there are higher feelings there. There's a higher food in those places. In America, it is only do re mi. They are like a first story structure. USA. They first of all lose their own races and cultures and they start again believing only in force and violence which is of the first story. 
and so it is hard for Americans to understand anything of a high ilk as there are very few vibrations in the United States of a higher ilk of the higher parts of the octave. Europe today is rooted in the Greco-Roman Empire. It's very deep and before that there were the pagan empires, there was Egypt, Asian influences. It is an ancient unbroken line. Whereas America is an attempt to exist without any roots whatsoever. Less politics from now on, I promise you. Goodbye. Don't stay away from the Lord too long, too far.